It's Gary Kay. We're here at ISE 2020. I'm here with Andrew Stark of MacNica. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, you're about to. Uh, here's why. Uh, MacNica, first off, uh, good afternoon, Andrew. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great, Gary. Thank you. Uh, first off, um, there is a standard that is published as of today. I kind of. Proposed. I, proposed, proposed standard. standard yeah. yeah, proposed standard, <laughs> I should say, for AV over IP called IPMX, mm -hmm. which arose from the Ames Alliance, yes. right? Yep. Uh, first off, talk about that a proposed standard and sure. who the Ames Alliance is. Well, as you may know, 172110 and MMOS have been very popular in broadcast. However, broadcast, as you may also know, is different than pro AV. And so research over a year kind of allowed us to collect those use cases and find out where those gaps are. And what we did is we said IPMX is really just 172110 and MMOS plus some constraints and some new additions to give you the HDMI experience that you need or that HDMI interoperability and also um, uh, cross vendor and cross market interoperability and flexibility. You know, there are some use cases you need one gig, some you need 10 and 20. Yeah, and we're talking about AV over right. IP here, exactly. right? And we have right. different flavors, different formats. Right. We have streaming, we have one gig, 10 gig, 25 gig, even 40 gig. So what we're talking about is 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 a is a is a, is a proposed standard yep. that would give what one gig AV over IP. Well, it actually it, one gig or any it, it actually doesn't specify the gigabit. Okay. What it specifies are the the components that are needed to offer true interoperability. So for example, SMPTE twenty one ten has dash twenty two, which is CBR encoding or CBR yep. uh, uh, compression on over the network. What IPMX does is it says okay, we're saying JPEG XS is the base codec. So I know if my box says IPMX and your box says IPMX, we're going to get video across. Right, and so the idea is to get, is to have an open standard yes. that anyone would have access to to develop on, yeah. and you've actually made a chip-based yes. product that is yeah. available for manufacturers to um, either use a reference design or buy the chip from you potentially, right. right? Yeah, standard's awesome, but if there's no SDK or no way to make a product out of it, it doesn't do us very much, right? So what we've done is we've taken our ME10, which is a system on a chip, and also our MPA1000, which is a module, and given manufacturers ability to make products in quantity right now that are gonna be ready for IPMX once it's ratified. All right, so this is what, uh, this is the chip working inside of a- yes, this is our little shop project uh, yeah. that we built here. This is, is this a transmitter or receiver? Um, both, actually. Okay. So our little module can can do receive or send a one gig uh, 4K 6444 uh, video using the uh, JPEG XS codec, and we also use the Tico XS extensions with that as well to give us desktop transparency, so. So, so, um, so th OEM providers, or you would be an OEM provider for other manufacturers to integrate exactly. this into boxes, yep. but you also have your uh, your own finished product, which is the MPA-1000. Is it just a no, reference actually, product? Okay, or? so let me back up. Okay. So the MPA-1000 is, uh, is actually kind of where it starts. So a developer, you're an OEM, and yep. you want to make products, right? <clears throat> you're not 100% sure about this thing, so what you do is you call up Matnica, and you get two of these boxes for 1500 bucks or 1450 okay. on sale today, just for you. <laughs> and... Um, that gives you send and receive, right? right? So now I can I can do all my testing, I can do my development with it. You're a bigger manufacturer and you want to go with the SOC, so then you go with the ME10, and that just gives you much higher quantities okay. and, and much lower cost, and also the ability to make a smaller box. So maybe you don't want a module, you don't have room for that connector in it. So I guess it depends on what you're using it exactly. for. So for example, putting this inside of a projector, you'll have plenty of room. Yes. But if you're building a, a box that's transmitter receiver for right. a gaming device or yeah. for a boardroom or right. for collaboration. Yeah, to be fair, that yeah. is an MPA-1000 in there. So you can get a very small box going. Yeah. Um, and that's that, we actually did design that for, you know, for heat dissipation and all that stuff too. So um, the module can still work, but you, you, if you have an existing design, existing product line that's using a different setup, you don't want to redesign the whole box just to fit our, our connectors. So okay, so right. let's, yeah. let's, let's ask the question that everyone's going to ask, because you have, you have SDVOE out mm -hmm. there, you have the Crestron NVX out there, you have the Extron Nav out there, you have all these other products, the SDSI, mm -hmm. that, that are all various ways of sending uh, video over IP. None of them have joined the Ames Alliance mm -hmm. to build a product based on the Ames Alliance. Yeah. So, so how does this fit into what they're doing? Well, I think in this day and age, if you can make an ecosystem that keeps people kind of locked into what you're doing, more power to you because yeah. that's a great business model if you can get at it. If you are more into the open standard part, if you believe that um, if we're an industry, we need to be able to talk together and interoperate, then you're going to want to 
push on us and, and everybody in the industry to really make IPMX uh, you know, a success. And, um, and I think that's really the key feature, that's the killer feature, right, is interoperability. And, and I should say, not only for manufacturers, but also for systems integrators, because if I have an open standard, and part of this is not just the codec, the, the yeah. trans, you know, it's also the API, right? So if I have um, open access and ability to work with the APIs that give me device discovery and everything else, and I don't have to be a member of this or that to do it, that means that I can be more creative. I can be, build more value into my integration business by being able to offer more applications and more flexibility kind of at, at that lower level. But, but you would agree that for this to be successful, for it to be a successful standard, either so those companies are probably going to have to join the IPMX yeah. group and start building products or make IPMX work through their products yeah. or or get usurped by the entire broadcast industry coming into Pro AV. Like, how do you see this sort of ferreting out? Because this is the beginning of it. By the end of 2020, I mean, I know that you'd love to think IPMX is going to be the thing that everyone's going to use, but where do you think we'll be at the end of 2020? you think you'll get Crestron and Extron and all these other companies to adopt, or what do you think will happen? Well, I, so it's probably an open secret that we understand that all of pretty much everybody is using the same basic yeah. kind of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, JPEG, in fact, Crestron right. started with JPEG 2000. Right. You're talking about JPEG 2000, SVSI right. started that way. Right, exactly. So so I think what these guys are going to do is they're going to hang on to that as long as they can, and then they're going to flip when consultants and customers start demanding interoperability because there's a lot of environments where you're, it's great. I love your technology. Everything looks awesome. I'm not going to hang my entire business or my entire company on, on something that I have no control over, especially when it is the means of which I communicate. And this is an incredibly important technology, not only from our industry, but just as people. We tell stories with video. The fact that we would tolerate or you know promote something that was locked like that and our content was kind of tied into that, that's kind of a dangerous risk. And I think that people recognize that, especially when you're talking about a basic thing like transport and communication, open is always going to win out. It's going to be a very interesting thing to watch in 2020 because we haven't had a standards group come together and use a standard protocol, meaning SMPTE 2110 has been around. It's yeah. being used in the broadcast industry. It's being adopted or adapted, right. I should say, to Pro AV. We haven't had anything like that because everything well, that's been created have, so far. Though. We have, though. Well, so prior to. In video. Well, yeah. So, like in video, right? Composite, component, yeah, S video, okay, yes. all came from broadcast. Okay, gotcha. And it wasn't until we hit digital where we needed right. to have SDI and they needed copy. Production. I guess I was saying AV over IP. Right. All the AV over IP right. so far has been. But now that customers. we're in AV over IP, right, we have an opportunity to take the platform that we're on and its flexibility and we're able to go back to an age where it was all just video. Yeah. And that's really where we yeah. want to get back to. It's just, just, we're just talking about video. And, if, and interestingly enough, as you kind of pointed out, Simpty set the standards yeah. for video for 50 years. That's what they do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it will be interesting for me to watch. Of course, I think a lot of you are watching this wondering what's going to happen because right now we don't, you don't have interoperability. If you buy a Crestron, right. uh, you buy into the Crestron ecosystem, you can't put Extron Nav with it. If you buy into the SVSI ecosystem, you can't plug it into right. SDVOE products and vice versa. In this case, one of the things I think that could happen is you have um, companies like SDVOE, organizations like SDVOE or, or, or Crestron or Extron, whoever, allow IPMX to run on their platforms as well. So yeah. they have their own ecosystem, but if you just want to do, send the signals up to the network and pull them off the network options, mm -hmm. then you go with that port. And if you yeah. want to do some more customization right. with some of the fancy video wall control and some mm -hmm. of the tiling and stuff, they can still have their own ecosystem. Yeah, you can imagine a company like uh, Crestron or what have you, supporting IPMX, supporting the NMOS API that comes with it as an accessory add-on to their main system, whereas other companies will, won't try to innovate on that. They'll use NMOS as it is and Just build NMOS an applications. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I think that there were, uh, for some period of time, we're going to have some yeah. universal adoption of this. Um, and uh, I don't know that it'll happen quickly. I yeah. think it'll be, uh, like you said, I think you had a good point. And that is, um, you know, if you can sell your own ecosystem, more power so to you for as long it. as you for as long as you can, because yeah. it's more profitable, and also you kind of own the customer. But yeah. it, it'll be interesting to watch this. Now, the AIMS Alliance, AIMS stands for Alliance for for IP, IP Media, Media Solutions. Yes. Yep. yep. Um, you can see them at AIMSAlliance.org. 
they have a great, um, I wouldn't say white paper, a great uh, blog that explains IPMX and sort of what they're planning on doing, who the members are, um, and of course, Macanica is the first. Macanica is the first company to build a, a, an Ames IPMX product that's available. Yeah. Is that right? Well, yes. There are other companies. There's a lot of companies out there making 702110 yeah, hardware sure. and software. We're the first ones to offer one gig solution for 4K60 using IPMX. Right, and so, that yeah. IPMX is aimed at Pro AV, correct exactly. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so the SMPTE 2110 is the standard for AV over IP inside of a broadcast studio exactly. and in broadcast applications. And I guess you're, what you're talking about doing, because they're talking about 40, 50 gig of bandwidth potentially mm -hmm. in those applications, is bringing it down to compressed one gig. And it's all about trade-offs, right? Yeah. And it is going to be trade-offs, because yep. ultimately you're also going to have people that want 5 gigs exactly. or 10 gigs, so yep. you're, this will not be the end. This no, no, no. We, we have 10 and 25 gig products, so we don't want to, we're not here to say, you know, uh, 1 gig is the answer. It isn't. Um, there are so, uh, situations where you want uncompressed video, yep. right? And, so. And, and so you'll have that as an option as well. So. We're going to also shoot videos on individual videos on this and the Ames Alliance products as well, or the Ames Alliance concept as well, or standard, what they're trying to, what yeah. I'm not Pro sure what the word is, proposed roadmap. Yeah, proposed yeah. roadmap. Um, um, also, uh, Mac and Nika, if you're here at the show, you should come by and look on the front of their booth. They actually have their, their original source, and then they have five different outputs. Uh, one of them is IPMX. The other four are familiar outputs from some of the brands and, and some of the products we've been talking about in this interview. Uh, we'll shoot a video of that as well. All that won't come across when you're shooting, a, even though we're shooting in 4K, it won't come across when we put it on YouTube. It'll, we'll do the best we can with that. But if you want to learn more about them, go to amesalliance.org. If you want to learn more about Macanica, go to macanicanatech.com, M-A-C-N-I-C-A tech.com, or go to uh, raypubs.com slash ISE 2020, type in M-A-C-N-I-C-A in the video search window, you'll find more inter more uh, product information about Macnica and what we shot of theirs here at ISC 23. Andrew, hey, thanks, Andy, for taking yeah, the tough questions you. on this. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, and thanks for watching.